Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where we share stories of people conforming to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. The first story, Sysadmins Y2K Challenges, Networking Mishap, Lunch Bet Triumph, Hearty Victory Feast at FUD Ruckers. The second story, Chad's first embezzlement attempt fails due to oversight, leading to firing. The third story, Guitarist Unplug Me Mid-Song, Joined Backup Vocals on Mic, Turned Out Great. On to the first story. Superb Raccoon in the Internets of Death, an SRIT story. So after my adventures in the Navy, I went into the real world as a sysadmin, after a few years in college getting a degree. My first job I had was for a small company of about 20 programmers. I did everything. My job description in my contract was, anything with a wire going into it or coming out of it. I worked with older tech and new tech, MUXs, VMS VAX workstations, IBM RS6000, HP UX, SCO Unix, Unixware, QIC tapes. So I got hard and fast education in wiring things up in house, and sometimes for customers. I got them on the internet with a real connection, set up our own SendMail server and a squid proxy. I was hot SH man. Well, so I thought anyway. 1999 is the start of the first internet boom and the local market is suddenly devoid of IT people. They're all heading for the Silicon Valley in droves. I get a call from a headhunter and end up in a real data center with real systems. AIX Power 3 SP2 nodes. They still had microchannel. My manager Joe was a former nuclear submariner, ran effing nuclear power plants and was a general bad A. Did not take SH from anybody for any reason. It, well, it rubbed off on me pretty quick which was maybe not so good considering now I'm in a huge data center with real systems doing real work. F up and people can't get their insurance paid. The other two players in this are Bob, the network manager. A crusty old dude from AT&T, he knew what he was doing. I had to give him that. And there was Bobette. He's also new to a real DC network admin. Specifically, he ran network cables. We both signed on at the same time. He's fresh out of school. I'm from a small company whose whole office could fit in the raised floor at least twice. Now, this was mid-1999 and Y2K is looming. We're replacing some older systems that cannot survive the Y2K rollover. I'm the FNG, only three weeks on the job so I get the physical SH job. I've racked and stacked them, and I have fresh new drops ordered in. It's not too bad. The IBM tech is there to help and she's kinda cute and fun to talk to for being an IT. She's so short she has her own ladder, which says property of Cynthia IBM, do not use just so she can reach the systems mounted at the top of the standard racks. The DC was built with Big A mainframe, VAX VMS, HP 3000 and such in mind. They did not have top of rack switches or even punch downs as a standard. No, instead they ran individual pre-wired four port RJ45 boxes they got from Graybar, back to a central punch down area, under the raised floor. It was all nice and neat, because Bob was an AT&T guy and did not F around with spaghetti cable. He once cut the wiring to a rack of Windows servers because the wiring was an effing Cthulian nightmare of crawling chaos. The NT guy used standard length cables instead of the custom cut ones, leaving yards and yards of loose excess loops under the floor. Not on Bob's watch. So anyway, Bob Ed is in charge of getting me my drops. Said drops show up. I ordered four, I only need 10, and Joe wants to have two extras, just in case we get another system in early. Do I get four? No, I get three. Three? That's not 12 ports, that's only nine ports, because of port C. Port C is a problem. I was told by Joe to get four drops, because only A, B, D ports support Ethernet. Port C is for either a POTS or for token ring. Yes, seriously. Token ring. We has it. The POTS lines are for systems that literally dial home to HP, IBM, DEC, EMC when they have a problem, or for the remote console lines. They do not support Ethernet, even if it's still an RJ45 jack. Well, I plug everything in. Three of my machines don't come up. No green lights, no blinky lights. Not on the server, not on the switch. I go get Bob Epp from the back to show him. Bob Ett argues. I argue back. He blames my machine. I get the IBM repair tech out. She gives it the green light. Everything is working. He gets out the fluke. No, really. The most expensive portable test equipment there is, and some effort calls it a fluke. Go figure. Fluke says the lights are green. Must be my machine. I glance over his shoulder and notice the token ring light is lit, not ethernet. Flukes are smart. 
It knows the difference. Bobette does not. We argue some more. Bob shows up and backs his guy. I argue back, point to the wiring order is wrong. Go get your manager, he says. So I do. F you, Bobs. Joe's gonna eat you alive. Don't have to go far because the system's operators have already gone and got him and told him what's going on. He comes around the corner at the end of the rows of system racks like a bull with an effing Toreador in his sights. Bob starts to bristle like 2,000 pound wild hog who has had his nap time disturbed. Me and Bobette start to edge towards the exit. But no, a sharp gesture pulls us both back in. What the F's going on? We both explain our side to Joe. Bob and Joe glare at each other. Plug in the fluke, port C. Joe growls. Bobette looks over and Bob nods, never taking his eyes off Joe. Lights come up green, and so does the token ring light. Joe stares harder at Bob. Bob stares back and reaches for his wallet, pulls out $20 and gives it to Joe, then stalks off with Bobette in tow. Well, SR, looks like lunch is on Bob. I bet him $20 that his guy would F up before you did. Nice job, D-head. We hit Fuddruckers a burger place with giant burgers up to one pound. It was delicious. The second story is, you want to lose $100? All right, sign here. I work in accounting, and my assistant is out on this particular day, so I'm working on invoicing. While doing invoicing, I come across a work order that has a higher expense amount than invoice amount. Realizing we will be losing $100 on the job, instead of at least breaking even, I decide to question the project manager Chad about it. Me. Hey, I noticed this job has an anomaly. Can you explain it to me? Chad. What are you talking about? Me. See the expenses? They reach a higher total than the amount you want to bill me for. I want to see if that was a mistake or... Chad. No, it's right. Me. If that's right, we're going to lose money on this job. You won't get commission and... Chad. I'm telling you it's right. Chad then rips the papers from my hand. See, we charge a 20% markup right here. He points to the wrong spot and has the audacity to look smug. See, it's fine. Me. I calmly take the papers back and show them the two amounts side by side. I see that. But you didn't account for that over here for the billing amount. The total billing amount is less than that. Chad. Look, it's right and I don't have time to explain it to you. Just do it and stop bothering me. Me. No problem. Can you just initial here so when our boss asks me why this job is invoiced so low I can... Chad. Sure, fine, whatever. Signs his name next to the billing amount. Now get out of my space. I go back to my office and invoice the too low amount. I sent it off, fully knowing this was going to backfire, and kept all backups and copies handy for when it did. Next Monday, I have the boss in my office. The invoice in question is in his hand. Boss. Hey, you did this invoice wrong. Shows me the invoice. Me. Actually, if you look at the backup, Chad told me that was the invoice amount. I show him where Chad signed off. Boss, I'll be right back. He left my office. Roughly an hour later, I get called into the boss's office. Chad is there looking uncomfortable, and my boss is on the phone. He waved me inside and I sat down. Boss, all right, we're all here. Now, Tandy Angie, please explain this to me. Me, I noticed that the expenses on this invoice were higher than the billing amount. Chad told me that the numbers were fine and to just do the invoice. Boss, hear that, Tex? Tex is the subcontractor we used on this job. Tex, yup, so what are we gonna do? Boss, only thing to do is fire them. They're either incompetent or cheating us. Either way, it's bad for business. I'm now very concerned for my job, but I sit silently. I know I don't have the whole story yet. Tex, I reckon you're right. Good luck, and don't worry about the park job. I got an opening up tomorrow I can squeeze in. Boss, thanks, Tex. He hangs up the phone and turns to Chad. Chad has gone from nervous to mad. Chad, it's not my fault she can't do her job. Boss, you signed your name right next to the wrong amount. Now you're either working with someone in accounting over in Texas company to steal from me, or you're too stupid to work here. Which is it? Chad stands, as does my boss. I stood as well, not liking being the only person sitting. Chad says nothing. Boss, you're fired. Get your computer and leave. Boss turns to me. Go ahead and fill out the paperwork for his leave. Make sure to add that he attempted to embezzle money. I nod and leave. Chad stays there. As soon as I leave, the office explodes in screaming. I stayed in my office doing the paperwork my boss asked me to fill out. I saw Chad leave later with his stuff thrown haphazardly into his bag. That was the last time I saw Chad. A friend saw him working at a cash register at a buffet place about a month later. Turns out both my boss and Tex had agreed to lower their markups for the job, so the invoice number was still too high, not too low.
but I didn't know that until after the fact when my boss had me redo the paperwork for the entire job. Someone from accounting in Texas company had altered the invoice sent to Chad, and they were planning on splitting the difference after we paid the altered bill. The third story is, unplug my guitar? I got pipes, bro. So I was at an open mic last night, sort of a blues jam session really, with some singer-songwriters thrown in to spruce it up. I'm included in the singer-songwriters. I occasionally jam with the band, but really I'm a solo musician at heart. Anyways, it was one of those rare occasions I was jamming with the band. The lead guitarist told me at the start of the song, follow my hands and that was it. Ha! <laughs> I was doing my best to keep up playing A, then a D, then back to A, then E, then D, etc. There was another singer-songwriter though, and since we had the whole band there, he kinda came up on stage too. Fair enough, I thought. I even helped him look for an extra plug and cord, but being the guest there, didn't really feel like it was my place to intervene and ask when he ultimately gave up his search. Still, he stood up there playing along. All the searching stuff was before the song, so cut to mid-song. Again, this feels like sort of an inclusive scene, so I'm thinking, all right, man, do you. If you aren't plugged in and no one can hear you, it's still cool to just stand up here and play along. So I'm just getting into my groove, feeling like, I don't know if all these chords are right, but I at least have the general idea, no? Then Mr. Singer Songwriter on my right taps me. Mind you, I was just starting to feel the harmonies, rhythm, etc. I trust any musician here knows that feeling when you start letting go into the music. So he stops me and he says, hey, that's an A7 correcting me. Okay, fair enough, I thought. I was a little caught off guard, but I just started trying to play an A7, showing him that's what I was doing now. After all, I wanted to play it right, and if he knew something I didn't, well, I'm always one for open lines of communication, etc. But then, this MF proceeds to reach out, and I SH you not, he unplugs my guitar mid-song and takes the plug and plugs in his own guitar. It was like a movie moment, picture in slow motion. His hand reaches out his fingers, probably sweaty and grimy. He pulls the plug out from my guitar, looking down the whole time, not at me. Finds the outlet in his guitar and plugs himself in. I SH you not, not once throughout this process did I get an inkling of is this okay energy from him. He just kind of reached out and did it. I'm awestruck. I didn't know what it would take for me as a budding naive young musician to get offended while on stage, but that was it for me. I spent about one sec, clueless what to do. This guy just took away my sound, and nobody who has any authority here, i.e. the band, really witnessed. I could take it back, but I'm not one for confrontation. So I'm going, he just left me dead in the water. Or did he? I looked back at him, and he was already doing his thing. He didn't even think twice. So I said F it. I set my guitar down, grabbed a spare mic and started improving on vocals. He looked over at the singer, who gave me kind of a nod. I think he knew something was going. He helped cue me in. First there was a piano solo, then he had me come in with some improv, then kinda had a call and response between me and piano, and then he jumped in for some lines. It was actually really effing cool, in the end. So thank you to Mr. Singer Songwriter, I'm gonna call him Mr. Cordless now since his name does start with a C, for pushing us over the edge to realize I am adaptable. Take away guitar? I got my vocals. Hell, if I don't have those for some reason, like if my voice is hoarse, I'll bring my harmonica next time. Thanks for making me realize where my priorities are. I was talking to him after the show, and of course he was trying to act all sad that he upset me by unplugging him. I try to handle it honestly, but gently letting him know next time I'll help him search for a chord ahead of time if that's what he wants. This is what really got me. The guy proceeds to tell me, no, I have a spare chord, it's in my guitar bag here. The dude brought his own effing cable and still thought it was better to unplug another musician mid-song than to just grab his own cord and plug it into an amp. Edit. I'll pretend like I'm leaning in to kiss him, and then when he thinks he has to stop me before receiving the smooching of his lifetime, click, unplug his guitar, holds up into cable for him to see. Smile fiendishly as I plug my guitar in and play the best A chord of my life. Thank you for watching. Hope you love these stories. Hit the like button and turn on notifications. Thank you for watching and have a good day.